Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to present a lecture about independent random variables. This is part of the entire course of advanced mathematics for um, high school students. Um, I do recommend you to watch this lecture and any other actually from unizor.com website because it contains um, notes for, for every lecture as well as um, exams for certain topics. Not all of them, but almost. So, today's topic is um, independence of random variables. Now, we have actually learned what is uh, an independence um, among certain events. So, event, events independence, we basically have learned in one of the prior um, lectures on conditional probabilities. Basically, let me just remind you very quickly that if you have um, the sample space, let's use the letter omega about, and it contains certain elementary events, and in this course we are assuming only a um, finite number of elementary events, now, there are certain events which are subsets of this set of elementary events. So, let's say you have A and you have B, two different events. They are subsets of the set of all the elementary events. Now, we call them, uh, we call them um, independent if conditional probability of event A under condition of event B occurring is equal to unconditional probability of A. So, um, if you forgot what conditional probability is, I do recommend you to go to the prior lecture, which uh, it's, in the, it's among the lectures on conditional probabilities. All right, um, so we know about events. Now we have to transpose this particular uh, definition uh, to uh, random variables. Now, by the way, a couple of consequences from, from this. Once uh, A is independent of B, actually, I proved in one of those lectures that B is independent of A. So here B is a condition, and A is an event which we are basically examining. Here is A in the condition, and B is an event. So if this is true, then this is true. And also, the simultaneous occurrence of two events, A and B, the probability of this simultaneous occurrence is equal to the product of their independent probabilities. That's yet another uh, property of conditional probabilities, which we did address before. So now we are trying to transpose all these definitions into the realm of random variables. Okay, fine. Now, first of all, let me just remind you what the random variable is. Well, random variable is basically a function on the elementary events. For each elementary event, our random variable takes certain value. Well, let's say x1, x2, etc., xn. So, the probability of each elementary event is basically the probability of our random variable C of taking one of these values. By the way, if we are talking about the random variable, which is basically a function, a numeric function, these are numbers, real numbers, so it's a numeric function on, uh, defined on the set of elementary events. Now, all x, x1, x2, etc., xn might not necessarily be different. I mean, is, uh, you obviously have something like an example of parabola which takes the same value of 1 if uh, argument is equal to minus 1 or if argument is equal to 1. So any function can take um, more than once the same uh, value in different uh, uh, elementary events, which is fine, in which case we can, you know, we can say that, for instance, x1 and x2 are exactly the same number. Well, we can say, let's call it y. So we can say that um, 
uh, random variable y takes value uh, uh, sorry c takes value of y x3 x4 etc but the value of y would be taken with a probability of p1 plus p2 right because this is a combined probability of two different events when the value of the random variable is the same but this is actually doesn't really you know it, it's not really significant so we can always say this there is some kind of um, random variable which takes some kind of um, real values with certain probabilities okay fine now what we are interested in is how can we define the independence of um, uh, random variables so let's consider this is our one random variable and this is another random variable well let's use the letter M first and then the letter N second since alphabetically M precedes N and X precedes Y okay and let's call this again something like Q different probabilities, different values, everything is different, all right? Now, um, let's return back to the events. So let's just think about under what circumstances our random variable C takes value, let's say, Xi. Well, it's basically the combination of all the elementary events of our initial um, sample space omega, the combination of all these elementary events where the value of C is the same. We just chose any, uh, any particular value. So we can always say that this is an event, um, the uh, random variable C taking a value of xi it's an event which is a combination of certain elementary events from our initial um, sample space so we can basically call this event AI so AI is a combination of let's say E2, E17 and E23 if my omega is this E1, E2, etc., E, K. So it's a combination of certain elementary events where our, le uh, our uh, um, random variable uh, C takes one of these values, all right? And I do allow for multiple events, elementary events, to, uh, to be mapped to the same value. Now, similarly, I can talk about elementary events which are combined together make my random variable eta equal to yj and now let's call it bj so this is a set of elementary events on which uh, xi is equal to xi and this is the set of elementary events from the same uh, omega where a random variable uh, eta takes uh, yj. Now, what we can now say that taking uh, by random variable any particular value is actually transformed into the language of events. And what I can say right now that I can basically define the um, conditional probabilities uh, of the random uh, variables through the conditional probabilities of events namely the conditional probability of uh, a random variable C taking XI under condition of uh, random variable eta takes uh, um, YJ is basically by definition a conditional probability of event AI uh, under condition of BJ. So this is a definition. Since C taking certain value is an event, 
and after taking certain value is an event, then I, then, then I can define the conditional probability of C taking certain value under condition of eta taking certain value as conditional probabilities of event. That's it, definition is finished. And now I can say that now I can define using this the independent random variables. I can say that if my variable C takes certain values, x1, x2, xm, whatever, with certain probabilities. And if, sorry, this event uh, conditional on this event equals unconditional probability for all x, i, and y, j. So all different pairs of x taking certain value and f taking certain value. If all the combinations of values really result in this particular equality, if my conditional probability of x taking certain value under this condition is equal to unconditional probability for any value which, uh, which x uh, can take and any value which ATEC uh, uh, can take. Then, only then, my random variables can be called independent. And as in, uh, as in the case of elementary events, all these nice properties, like for instance, if this is true, then the probability of ETA taking any value under condition of C taking any value. If, if that is true, so if C is independent of eta, then eta is independent of C. And also, the probability of combined and uh, eta equals yj equals to the product of their pro corresponding uh, probabilities. Now, the proof of this is basically nothing but um, using the AI and BJ events instead of, instead of this. So everything just follows from the, from the uh, definition quite nicely. So we have defined what is the uh, independence among two random variables. That's fine. Uh, what else is interesting here? So the properties I have considered. Uh, now properties of independence, this and this. Okay. All right, fine. So that's it about um, definition. Now let's just consider a couple of examples. Now, for instance, our first example is, for instance, you have two dice. So you're throwing one dice and then you're throwing another dice. From intuitive kind of understanding of the whole process, I, I, it, it's kind of obvious that no matter what's the result of the first dice, it should not really affect the second, right? I mean, that's kind of obvious. Let's prove it mathematically using our definition of independence. So, what is our omega? Omega is the combination of six different uh, results of the first, uh, 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 of the dice, right? But now we have two different uh, uh, dice which means that we have to really consider um, the combinations, uh, the, the pairs of, of, of the results. So it will not be 6, it would be 6 by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are results of two different uh, dice rolling one after another. So let's say the 
uh, these numbers, the number of the of the rows, is the result of the first dice, and this is the result of the second dice. Now, um, I didn't mention it actually, I forgot to mention that the very last property, um, the property of uh, combined um, value of xi and eta, uh, and you, you take the probability of this event, is equal to the product of corresponding uh, probabilities. So, probability of xi is equal to xi and eta is equal to yj is equal to the product of their... Okay. Now, this is a characteristic property. It's very easy to do exactly the same thing as I did with, um, with events, that uh, all these three um, equations which I wrote, the conditional probability of this under this condition is equal to unconditional, or conditional probability of this under this as a condition is equal to this. And this formula that the um, uh, probability of the combined event is equal to the product of uh, corresponding probabilities. All these three uh, uh, properties are equivalent. So if we take one of the definition, other follows, and if they uh, take as a, as, a, as a definition, the first one is following. So um, basically, all these are called a characteristic properties of the independent. So let's just think about uh, this particular um, equation as a characteristic property and let's just check if in, if, if in this particular case it, it holds all right so now if you take two certain values for c and eta c is the result of the first which is row number and eta is the result of the second dice that's the column number so if you if you if you take um, their combined uh, value, let's say x is equal to 2 and 8 is equal to 4. 2 and 4. So what would be the probability of this? Obviously 1 over 36, because it, it from, from the definition of whatever we are doing with, with dice, we are rolling the di two dice actually, all the chances of all the pairs must be um, the same, right? So this is 1 36. Now let's consider what these are. So what's the probability of the uh, xi is equal to 2 uh, when we take two, uh, when we roll two dice. Well, it's this plus this plus this plus this plus this and plus this, right? So it's six times uh, 136. So it's 636. So this is 136. This is 636. Which is 1, 6. Right? Now, what is the probability of eta equal to 4 in this case? So it's, it's basically this, regardless of the first. We are talking about completely independent value of the second roll, regardless of what the first roll uh, show. So the first can be either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. What's important is that the second is equal to 4. And obviously it's again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 136. So it's also 636, which is 136. 1, 6. And obviously the product of 1, 6 and 1, 6 gives you 136. So this particular equation actually holds, which proves that throwing when you're throwing two dice the result of the first is completely independent of the result of the second now now let's consider another example when this independence is not actually um, the true property and for this reason instead of considering our uh, two different results of the first dice and the second dice, I would consider two different um, random variables, C being the first row and eta being sum of first plus second row. 
Okay, now I'm sure you, you, you see and you feel that this is not exactly an independent thing, that the sum depends on what exactly um, the first row is, and it might be different, but, right? So let's just choose um, a couple of numbers um, and let's prove that the equation which I wrote about the uh, probability of simultaneous um, taking certain values is equal to the product of probabilities that that's not a true equation in this particular case so what can we take as a value let's say again uh, C is let's say 2 and eta um, well let it be 4 I don't care actually now what are all our three probabilities which we were talking about. So, the probability of C is equal to 2 and eta is equal to 4. What is this? Well, if, if my first roll is 2, that's all these guys. But, I would like at the same time sum of them, of the first and the second, to be equal to 4. Which means for the second I have only one choice, which is also 2. So this is basically this event. 2 and 2. There are no others. And it's equal to 136. This probability, right? Now let's talk about the product of probability of this times probability of this. Well, probability of C is equal to 2 is obviously 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 36, which is, we already did this, it's 1, 6. How about probability of eta is equal to 4? Well, let's see. Well, it's this 2 and 2, right? Well, I shouldn't really do this. I should really mark as an intersection. So this particular cell of my table represents 2 and 2, and the result is 4. Now, also this 1 and 3, and also this 3 and 1. So all these three results of my throwing a uh, couple of dice result in this. So it's actually 3, 36, which is 1 twelfth. And as you see, the product of this 1 6 times 1 twelfth is 1 72nd, not 1 36. They are not equal. So the product of these independent probabilities is not equal to the, pro to the uh, probability of their simultaneous occurrence which proves that this is not independent variables, right? And now the last problem where my calculations will be slightly more involved in this particular case. It's also about two dice. I would like to know the following. One event is this, and another event is um, this. Again, since we don't really have any connection between these two roles, then it looks like it should be independent, right? Well, let's just check again. What's the probability of the first one being odd and the second row being even? Well, that's this one. The first is uh, odd is this, this, and this. And the second one even is this, this, and this. So on the crossing, I have, let me just wipe out this from the previous problems. So what I have is this, 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 
this, this, this, and this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? Is that right? So I have nine, thirty-six, which is equal to one quarter. That's the probability of and this simultaneously. One quarter. All right. Fine. Now let's calculate separately the probability of C is equal to odd. So the first one is odd, and we don't care about the second one. So the first one is odd is all of these, all of these, and all of these, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, three times. So it's 1836. So the probability of C is equal to odd is um, uh, what did I say? 1, 2, 3 by 6, 18. 1836, which is 1 half. Now, what's the probability of the second being um, even? Well, it's all of these, all of these, and all of these. So the second one is even, and doesn't matter what's the first one, right? So this is also 6 plus 6 plus 6, 1836, which is also another one half. And their product is one quarter. And that's the proof that these two um, variables, random variables, are independent. Well, I think that's all I wanted to say. I do encourage you to look again onto unizor.com and take this lecture with its notes. Read the notes, it's very useful. I might actually present something slightly differently. Uh, and if there are some exams, you obviously are welcome to take exams. That's only for registered students, by the way. All right, thanks very much and good luck.